It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to review another role-playing game supplement for you. Um, what I'm going to show you here is a giant, uh, well, it's a giant dungeon, basically. Um, this is Rapana Thuk, and as you can tell on the bottom here, it is from Frog God Games and uh, also Necromancer Games. Now, this is the third version of this that I own. Um, originally, uh, back when 3.0 first came out, Dungeons & Dragons 3.0, um, Necromancer Games was a company uh, that published uh, dungeons and, 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 and supplements for D&D with the tagline of 3rd uh, edition rules, uh, but 1st edition feel. And one of the very first products I ever picked up uh, by them uh, was uh, their module RA1, which stood for Rapan Athuk 1, and that was the Upper Graves, I think is what they called it. Or the, I, forget, I forget exactly, but and then after that came RA2, and finally RA3. And um, Rapan Athuk was a dungeon uh, that had kind of been um, the creators of Necromancer Games, um, Clark Peterson and Bill Webb, um, it had been kind of like their dungeon, their like little homegrown dungeon in their homegrown world that they had played when they were younger, uh, and um, they just kind of kept on expanding on it and making it bigger and, and what have you, as, as most uh, DMs did way back in the day. And uh, it is... Um, uh, uh, there was a there's a very long um, description of what first edition means, and it, it really makes a lot of sense. But one of the things that um, uh, th that I think Bill Webb wrote, and one of the things on it that I agreed with in a, gr a great deal uh, was um, the line. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it, but um, uh, it's uh, think think tomb of horrors. You know, not I forget what it is. I forget what the other thing was. And, um, but basically, if you know what Tomb of Horrors was, Tomb of Horrors was this old, old school Gary Gygax adventure, um, that really, it, it was just a bunch of traps, and it was just a bunch of, like, death rooms, um, and hardly any real monsters, so to speak, and, but it was, it was well known for being exceedingly deadly and exceedingly frustrating, uh, for players, if you played it correctly. And Rapana Thuk uh, kind of takes that mentality and uh, applies it in spades. Now, at the very beginning of when I got, like, RA1, one of the really cool things about Necromancer Games products was in the opening page uh, inside, and, yeah, this, this was published, I mean, I'm guessing this was back in, like, 2006? Uh, God, I mean, I, I'm, you're, I'm probably wrong. But, it, you know, it's it was a good... It was a good... No, it was even earlier than that, honestly. I think it was more like 2004, 2003. But, um, but on the inside front cover of, of, of all of their products, there was a, like, a secret password um, that when you went and you logged into the Necromancer Games website, um, you can access uh, extra... Uh, like downloadable bonus stuff basically and it was rather ingenious actually um because of the fact that uh um theoretically you have you know ra1 which was like you know a 32 page adventure if i remember correctly it wasn't huge it was you know it was just i think it was just two or three levels of a dungeon and kind of described the outside area a little bit and that's pretty much it and gave you some background info but if you went and you um, entered the the code word, which was usually the name of a big bad monster that was in there, um, and you went to the website, you could download all this like cool stuff. Like um, most of it was areas of the wilderness that surrounded uh, the the dungeon, and so then you can kind of give it some life and or unlife if you will and and breadth of the the kind of weird uh situation that, that was around there and what you could deal with and um in a weird way i think it was really helpful because of the fact that um yes they were kind of giving the stuff away for free uh but they didn't have to add it to the book they didn't make the book more expensive they didn't you know they didn't add another 20 pages or something like that 
And um, it was just, it was fascinating because you could download this stuff and it was great, great stuff. It wasn't like it was stuff that like wasn't any good and they just kind of like, oh, we'll just give you this this junk. It was like they really, really worked hard on that. And, they, I mean, and you can't help but think that they wanted to add it, but just cost efficiency or whatever. So, I mean, I, so uh, RA1 was out and then RA2 came out. And then I remember when RA3 came out and like it was like really limited print run or something. Because I remember I was really lucky to get a copy. Actually, my the... The local game store in my area that was called Omni Games and Hobby, I had them like order it way ahead of time, and uh, and then it came out, and then like pretty much it came out, and then it just vanished. I mean, it's like everybody snatched their copies up and held onto them, and I'm pretty proud of the fact that I still have a copy of that. So, um, what happened was it kind of like you know I had all that information, and in the meantime, I I had told myself I wasn't going to run it until I had all three of them, RA1, RA2, and RA3. And I read them. I mean, I read them front to cover multiple times. And when RA3 came out, I mean, it was a bigger, it was a big, thick, like, 96-page or 112-page book. And um, and it was tons of stuff. And it really made the dungeon expanded it out and had all kinds of crazy stuff. There's, there's a goblin city and stuff like that. It really expanded out the game. And um, I was finally ready. I was like, okay, you know, I had read all these stories about all these monsters and these dangerous rooms and these death traps and all this stuff. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to run this. And I remember I, I had talked this, uh, this, this, this adventure up to my, my, my gaming group, and they're like, yeah, this is like they call it the world's deadliest dungeon. And they're like, huh, hmm, you know, like being young and and cocky it was like, whatever, it can't be that tough. It's just another dungeon. And um. And you know, I remember watching the dungeon just chew them up and spit them out, and uh, and it, it, they learned pretty quickly that you couldn't take like a Diablo esque attitude towards the game, meaning like kill everything at every level. I mean, you, they learned to run from things that they normally wouldn't run to. Um, they learned that uh, the 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 seemingly empty room was most assuredly just waiting to kill them. Uh, with some unseen, unknown force. And uh, it, we had a blast. And it was like the most fun my, my players ever had uh, watching their characters uh, get disintegrated or burned to death or what have you. Uh, and they and they laughed and laughed and laughed. I'm kind of telling you a little bit, uh, a lot about it. But I mean, this this, this adventure kind of sells itself. I mean, first of all, it's it's thick. It's 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 huge. It's it's beautiful and I mean, and it it just it they don't need a picture of big evil on the front. It, it, it you just see this and it's impressive, you know? Uh, it looks like it should be on like a a, a a raised dais or something, right? And um uh the other thing about it is that I mean, then oh, I forgot to tell you, then after they had our own R2 and R3, but they had a box set that was uh, Rapana Thuk Reloaded. And so then they kind of went back in and they cleaned up some stuff that maybe had some typos or and then clean, clean, you know, made it good. And then they actually had one big book inside this box set that was the whole dungeon. And then they had one big book that was um, the outlying areas and wilderness encounters and whatever. And so, and that was pretty cool. They had that, and I still have that, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of that too. And then, um, just recently, uh, you know, I, I mean, I remember they, they, I think they did a Kickstarter, if I remember correctly, to, to redo the whole thing, and you know, put it in these this really nice, impressive, like you know, faux leather bound book, and um, and then, uh, and then I, I eventually I picked it up. I picked it up in the last couple months or so. Um, it was, and it's kind of like going back to meet an old friend. And one of the really nice things about this is that they they took like everything that was already there already and put it back in this. They took all of the wilderness areas and put it back in here. And then they went and they wrote a bunch of more levels and a bunch more stuff and put it in here. And I'm going to show you um, this kind of weird overview of all the different levels of that this dungeon has. And it's, it's, if you don't know about it, it's going to blow you away. Just because the sheer immensity of this adventure is, is, uh, is crazy. I know there was like that world's largest dungeon that came out years ago. And I guess, yeah, that was huge. And, uh, you had tons of, uh, rooms and traps and what have you. And I even played that. A buddy of mine ran that. And, um, honestly, maybe that was, that was the largest, but this is very close to being as large and 10 times more deadly and a hundred times better written. So 
I'm gonna like just I'm, I'm gonna I, I have a few pages in here that I'm gonna like flip to and I'm gonna show you guys um, you know and I don't want to give away too many secrets about this because um, they're half the fun is the DM reading this and like sitting there with a smile on his face and like looking forward to putting uh, his friends through that portion of the vision. and half of the fun as a player is to go into this and, and experience it so I don't want to give away too much stuff but um let's do that I'll show you some pages out of this book I'll show you some of the maps I'll show you what you know what the really nice in guts of this book looks like and then I'll come back here and I'll tell you, I'll gush more about how awesome this book is, and uh, and, and there you go. So, all right, cool. So here uh, I'm going to show you the the insides of Rapunathuk. All right, here is the giant book of Rapunathuk. Um, it has oh, what, how many pages again does this have? It's well, uh, 665 or so. So you're getting a lot of book uh, for for your money here. Um, I just wanted to, yeah, big table contents page, but I just wanted to, uh, real quick, when you get this, make sure you read the tribute, um, because this is a very well written and, and, and you're a relatively short uh, message from Bill Webb uh, about the appreciation that he has uh, for the, uh, the the pioneers of of D and D and role playing games, and, and obviously uh, Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax are mentioned several times in this, and and it really kind of discusses um, just how far the industries come. So, um, you, Bill, if you're watching this, I do appreciate you putting this in there because it really, uh, it really kind of showed uh, the, the 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 transformation that this dungeon went through, and also um, you as a publisher did. So, anyway, regardless, um, you have what 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 adventure wouldn't have like a cool little uh, rumors about Rapana Thook. There's rules about how to get that, and I'm just going to read a couple. They're kind of neat. Um, it says like there's a corridor of solid white stone which is cursed. Anyone who walks its length is lost forever. You know, great cool. Mysterious stuff. Uh, magical black skeletons inhabit the dungeon. They are greatly feared, as clerics cannot turn them. You know, or a benevolent old wizard lives near the temple of Orcus. He reportedly offers refuge to those who kill the servants of the evil one. You know, so just all kinds of cool, like oh, I mean, write that down. Maybe that's true. You know, and then of course it says whether it's true or false on there. So I mentioned, okay, here's a big, you know, generic. These are the different levels of the dungeon, and there are lots of them here. Um, but, uh, here, and this, this might be hard to understand, but each one of these is a different level of the dungeon. So you can see, like, 1A, 3C, 5B, and it shows, and it's kind of tough to see, and I apologize for that, but each one of those, it actually shows how they're connected to the different levels of the dungeon, and how, like, what room, like, if you can, it's barely, so it's like, six... A-8, if you take that, will lead you to, you know, 3-2 over here. And so it's kind of a neat way that, like, this whole giant dungeon complex, uh, including the areas above in, in the wilderness, those these are the areas, which spots lead to different spots in the dungeon. That's one of the cool things about this dungeon is, and, and, and as a DM, and, we, and I, I know a lot of the people I like this, DMs, we kind of run into that rut of the dungeon has one entrance, and uh, and and then and you go there, and then level two has uh, to get to level two. There's one way to get to level two, and to get to level three, there's one way to, get to level three, and things like that. And what Rapana Thuk has several different and several different entrances to the dungeon uh, that take you to several different levels. And one of the cool things about the game is is that um, like when you get to the the, the the main way to get in, um, there's several different ways from that main way to get in, and some of them are more deadly than the others. And there's a there's a saying about Rapana Thuk is don't go down the well. And of course there is a level called going down the well, and it is exceedingly deadly if your players decide to do that. So. Uh, regardless, that's that's kind of like a weird, cool way uh, for all those things to kind of tie together. Now, this is the ground level. This is the main way people normally go in. And um, the maps in this book are awesome. You have this kind of backwards cross. You have all these little areas, whatever. And there is a mausoleum there that they will enter and they will go in. And this is the well that they speak of, not to not go down the well. And I have had many players uh, find all three different ways uh, into the dungeon that's here. I'm not going to go through each and every one. I will say this, though. Um, 
one of the very first things that your players will encounter, and the most common way to enter the dungeon, is they will run into a trap that can very well kill them all in the very first uh, time you enter. Now, one of the cool things about people, I always said about Rapana Thuk, is it's very, very difficult uh, for first level adventurers. It, 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 uh, um, you, you can't really play the game first level. You gotta get your people to like at least third level, more likely fourth or fifth, before you take them to this dungeon. One of the really nice things is is that they actually went and they made um, stuff for this book that is for entry level adventurers. Now, each uh, each level has a little block right here, uh, and this is great. It tells you the difficulty level here: one, their first or second level uh, people, uh, and then it tells you the entrances and exit. These the stairs, you know, go. This is how you get into the this particular uh, area, and then. This and um, like on this one at one C dash seventeen and one C dash twenty three, there are you know stairs that lead to this and so on and so forth. It, we, normally, when you buy a dungeon, when you get like a dungeon book, it has you know like only three, four, maybe five different levels, and so matching all these things up is pretty easy. Uh, but um, in this situation, when you have 20 different levels to the dungeon and multiple ways to go back and forth between all of them, it's so invaluable that they put this in here. Plus, they put the wandering monsters in here, the standard features of it, like if the, the doors are special, if they're tough, or if they're locked, or if they're unlocked. Does the level have shielding? I mean, can you teleport in and out from that particular spot? Um, if there's anything uh, out of the ordinary, as far as, far as the, the, the level of the dungeon that you have to worry about when it comes to uh, handling different uh, types of PCs or player character, uh, player character abilities and what have you. Plus, um, there's always the wandering monster table, right? there ready to go and the cool thing is is if you buy the book uh through frog god games um you get access to the pdf for free uh and you obviously then can print off uh the maps print off this you know things like that so you can have those handy you don't have to flip back and forth through the book i'm not going to show you like every dungeon level uh in here but there, i mean there's tons now i'm going to show you this this is if i had any detraction at all uh from this book it is uh this one one thing there are a couple levels like this is level six the maze and of course you run around in the maze and and, and and fight things and pretty straightforward you might say that doesn't look like a maze but you'll notice that there's these locations here 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 and here and yeah there uh and it says right there that's like a two and it's a maze and what they tell you um as the 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 the, the dm is that what you should do is you should make a maze for that particular area. Make make something to happen. And they actually give you a couple of maps for free. You know, just like here, here's some sample mazes. And they say, you know, have the have the walls shift, have them change, you know, throw wandering monsters at them, things like that. And here's a couple of sample maze maps that you can have. And so like they have like teleportation circles and secret doors and spinners and all kinds of stuff like that. And that's cool and all. But as a dungeon master, I have tried to put mazes in, in my, my maps before, and um, it, it, they don't work. I mean, they don't transfer over well. And maybe somebody else out there has, like, a way to do it that, that like, it makes it work or makes it make sense. But for me, whenever I've had to do something like this, um, it, it, it's just like, okay, you move 20 feet, and there's a passageway going east, and there's a passageway going west. Okay, we looked down to the west. Okay, it goes 10 feet, and then goes off to the north. Okay, what's to the east? It goes 30 feet, and then heads south. Okay, let's map that out. And there's that whole weird step-by-step -step process that they go through, and um, in all honesty, it, like it, it drives me nuts, and it's not it's not fun. It's like it's like it, it's just a it's just a time waster. It just bogs it down. And so when we've gotten to these maze parts, uh, when we've played the dungeon uh, multiple times, what I've usually done is I've just come up with like a you know like a um, like a, a, a big monster room or something, or maybe I came up with a puzzle or something like that. I replaced the mazes, and that's the one thing I don't I, I, that I if I had any issue with it at all. Um, I don't like that portion, and so and, and maybe you you would like it. Maybe you'd like uh, you know putting this stuff your players through it. But that would be the one thing uh, that you know it, it, instead of the me giving this uh, an A plus 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 plus, it's an A plus plus plus. You know, so I mean it, it's not a much of a complaint, but it's my one little fiddly thing uh, that 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 I disliked. So uh, 
keep turning here and then I wanted to show you a couple other things here. I love this level. This is one of my favorite levels. Yes, there is a level that is for um, the gates of hell and this is one of the most deadly levels of the dungeon. Um, uh, my players have lost several of their characters in this area and uh, yes, th there is here 7-4. I'm not going to tell you anything about it but you know, I want to get any spoilers but yes, there's a challenge rating 16 room uh, that is the gates of hell and this is a very tough but I, I, I do like the fact that there is actually a level uh, for that in the, in the game. So um, here is, actually this is one of the, the lower temple of Orcus. There's like these temples of Orcus. Orcus is obviously the big evil demon god that uh, you're, you're kind of fighting against theoretically in this. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you a piece of art that I've always liked. And I think this has been in every single uh, example of the book. I love how brutal this is, the clay golem that's just being unaffected uh, by the piercing weapons that's just smashing this poor hapless adventurer into the ground. Um, these people that are trying to fight uh, this demon who is using his pincher claws to, yes, chop off this guy's arm that's flying over this way. Um, you know, this is one of the most deadly battles in the game, and rightfully so, because you're you're attacking uh, like a high priest of Orcus, if you will, in this area. And, and so, and there's just tons and tons and tons of levels and stuff going on and like awesome maps that's the bloodways the oh man the bloodways that thing just rips people apart but and it all pays off if somehow and my players have never gotten this far uh, i'll be completely honest and i'm not going to show you anything really about it but you get if you can manage to get down to level 15 and that does not mean there's only 15 levels there are way more than 15 levels to this this dungeon book here um because there's like level 7a 7b there's level 9c 9d you know things like that so um this is the den of the master and as you can probably guess it is the den of uh orcus and uh and there's i'm not going to show you anything but here is like like the weird final battle, there's the big bad evil demon god and blasting an adventure into nothingness uh, with, with, with his rod of Orcus there. And you can see the Merileth demons just slicing uh, the, the hapless players into bits. And so um, I don't know if anybody has ever th really gotten all the way to the bottom of this dungeon. I'm sure maybe somebody has. And they, uh, they actually give you some uh, pre-generated characters that you can use and things like that if people don't want to use those, uh, don't want to make their own. Not that nobody ever uses pre-generated characters. Everybody wants to make their own stuff. But they do make for good NPCs. If like somebody gets killed, you got to give somebody really quick. They're pretty good for that. Um, but I don't think, I don't know if anybody ever playing by the rules has gotten to the final level of the dungeon and, and actually defeated Orcus. But um, maybe somebody has. That'd be pretty cool if they were able to pull that off. Uh, finally, there's, and this is kind of tough to see, but these are the different battle maps if you play with the grids. These are different battle maps for areas of the of the dungeon, and you can obviously print these off. You're not going to cut these out of the book or anything like that. But they're included basically so they're with the PDF, so you can print those off and then have them ready for the different levels or whatever. And um, you know, there's like a big list in the back here about priests of like Orcus and Sathaga. That's people that back the Kickstarter. Uh, but... The one thing I wanted to show you is here's the spot for the obituaries. Of all the players that you're killed and the cause of death. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool if you ever want to enter those. So there you go. Uh, that uh, kind of shows you everything that is within uh, this book. Well, I shouldn't say it shows you what's within the book. There's tons more, obviously, that I didn't show. And, um, and even the highlights that I showed you, there's probably a ton of stuff in there that is even better that I didn't highlight. So um, that is uh, what I was going to show you and kind of give you a glimpse of what you'd get if you purchased this book. And uh, why don't I tell you more about why Rapanathuk is so awesome uh, right now. All right, so I, I showed you what I could. And, um, and I mean, what I showed you, I hope, impressed you, theoretically. But um, what is probably... Uh, like uh, weird and 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 is is that I, I, I more important is that there's really no way that I could actually show you everything in this and um you know and I there is like one thing well actually say I'll say two things there are two things that I think will prevent people 
uh, from wanting to get this. Now, first of all, I, I want to say that this is the Pathfinder version of it. Um, there is a secondary system called Swords and Wizardry. Uh, you can pick up the core rules for Swords and Wizardry for nothing um, uh, through the Frog God website. And it is a very old school system. For those of you who are familiar with old eight Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, you know, first edition, that kind of stuff, um, that's what that is. And uh, so... If you wanted to pick up the Swords and Wizardry version, you can do that as well. And like I said, if you want to check out that rule set, you can download the core rules uh, uh, right over at Frog God Games for nothing. But um, a couple of things about it. it this is a $100 book. Um, from time to time, Frog God Games does run a special or two, and you can get the stuff on the cheap. I mean, by on the cheap, you know, it'll be like, you know, 25% off or whatever. Um, so you can pick it up for a little bit less. So if you want to keep your eyes open, you can you can definitely check that out. Um, but, I mean, seriously, uh, I mean, I think I got mine at 20% off. There was a deal or a special or something. But I it was worth $100. I mean, so, I mean, if you are a serious uh, dungeon master um, the and or, or just a fan of really well-written D&D uh, uh, &D books. I mean, it's, it's worth your hundred bucks. I, I, I say that without even uh, a doubt in my mind. Um, and uh, for a ton of reasons, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll expound on that in just a few seconds. Now, the secondary thing is, is that this is not... I mean, if you are a relatively new D&D &D gamer, um, if you've kind of gotten in uh, with 4th edition or or uh or fifth edition i mean it's weird it's like you can definitely tell um as as the game as the book has been created and expanded upon those first few dungeon levels are are very very old school like the the, the rooms don't make a lot of sense there's lots of weird crazy stuff going on and um you know and it's just like uh and and the you know there's there's like monsters that shouldn't be that super difficult like in areas that like second or third level adventurers could stumble upon, you know, and so um, it, 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 but as you get deeper or as you go to different areas of, of basically levels that were created later, you can kind of sense the, um, the kind of more recent uh, creation uh, mentality seeping into it. And so like the ecology of the dungeon actually starts to shine through. I mean, back in first edition D&D, &D, I mean, when you were a kid and you made a dungeon, it was like there were tables where you'd roll randomly to see what monsters. And so, like, you'd make a room and you'd roll, and, okay, there's seven orcs in this room. And then you'd roll the next room, and, okay, there's an Otiug in this room. And then you'd roll the next room, and it's like, oh, there's a family of five Umber Hulks in this room. And these all these rooms are with, like in, like, in, like, you know, like, 60 feet of each other. And so, like, they're, like, you know, living in apartments down this, like, uh, you know, monster row, if you will. I mean, there's no reason why these monsters would be close by, but it didn't matter to you, because as a kid, um, you kind of just said, okay, kick that door down, and then fight those guys and kill them and take their treasure. Okay, go to the next one, kick that door down, and now now we're going to kill this Otiag, and we're going to take his treasure, you know. And, and so, and then kick that door down, and ah, Umber Hulks, everybody run. But, um, no, and so, uh, you know, it, was, it was this weird... Um, we didn't care, you know, and then later on what happened is is that uh, dungeons had to have a narrative, you know, and they had to have a purpose and they had to have um, a reason why, you know, the troll was living by the underground river next to the giant clam nest, you know, there was a reason why that guy was there uh, and before there just wasn't, you know, I mean, it didn't matter. And I don't mind that. I mean, whatever. Either way, I can play either way. But I mean, you can definitely tell as 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 the game evolved, the dungeon evolved too. No, I suppose they could have gone back, and they could have uh, you know updated and and made those those dungeon levels that aren't so uh, modern, for lack of a better term, and and change them up. But they haven't, and I really appreciate that about the dungeon. I, I really appreciate the fact that. Um, they, they kind of have taken the attitude of, no, this is what we used to play, and, and we want you um, and your characters to die in the exact same dungeon that my characters used to play in and die. So I kind of dig that. And it is kind of a nice trip down memory lane, especially if you're uh, an older, uh, old-school role-playing gamer. Now, um, 
the other, and, and so like for that reason, uh, where, I, where I was going with this, for that reason I can see perhaps because of kind of the hokiness maybe, I can see maybe perhaps like a uh, newer D and D players kind of seeing this and saying, eh, maybe this is just isn't for me. And like I said, in the price. Now, as far as the price goes, remember you can always pick up the PDF file, and that's like, you know, half off or something like that. I mean, it's like the, this book is a hundred dollars. If you want to get the PDF, it's like sixty dollars, something like that. So if you just if you don't care about having it on your on your laptop or or running it, uh, you know, through your tablet or something, you can definitely get it cheaper that way. So. I mentioned that I can't recommend this game enough. I really can't recommend uh, this dungeon, not game, this dungeon enough. Um, it teaches uh, your, your, your players uh, humility. It teaches them to be better role-playing gamers. It teaches them to think on their toes. It teaches them um, to be scared again. You know, I mean... Um, D&D Ventures now, it's like we've kind of get into this world where it's like, oh, well, we'll just raise him from the dead if he dies. Or, oh, well, yeah, just that doesn't, you know, my, I mean, fourth edition really killed D&D for me in a lot of ways. I mean, because of the whole, just it was all about that grid and all about that combat and your powers and things like that. And, I, that always, and, and it bothered me, you know. And, um, and I, I, people... You know, never really. They, 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 I think in for. I I know this is kind of you know old fuddy duddy role playing gamer get off my lawn guy, but it really taught in a weird way players not to respect the DM. In my opinion, I mean the DM. In my when I was younger, the DM was your adversary. I mean, there was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna totally kill you. Okay, here's this monster. Or, oh, do you, do you touch the sword? You know, they, things like that. You know, I mean, and it was the the person that was kind of there. You know, yes, he's facil he or she was facilitating the game and refereeing the rules, but they were also kind of secretly out to get you. And that's kind of my mentality. And at some point, the referee or the GM or the DM or whatever you call it, they became like. Oh, I'm here to tell a story, and I want you to join in. The players join in. We're all going to tell a story together, and this is going to be a fantastic story about about how you eventually became heroes of renown, and um, and that's fine, and I do that. I mean, we, we I play in games that we're, where we do that, but um, somewhere along the way, we we, we kind of lost that, and uh. An old school adventure like this brings back that killer DM. It it brings that that and, and if you don't have it in you, um, and and you and this this dungeon will, will will bring it back for you. I mean, it makes it very easy uh, to kill uh, either unlucky or unwary adventures, and 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 you don't have to feel guilty about it at all. I mean, you 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 present this to your gaming group saying, okay, we're gonna run this. And you better have a blank character sheet handy, because chances are uh, you're going to lose your character. And, and and if you, I think if you open up with that, I think people can respect that. So, um, it is by far, and I and this is speaking from a dude that has purchased probably. I mean, hundreds of adventures in multiple different uh, role-playing uh, genres and games and systems and what have you. And out of all of them, there's only one that I've bought three different versions of it, and that's this. And the reason for that is, flat out, it is the best adventure that I've ever read. And it is the best... It, it, as a DM, I have had more fun running... My, uh, my my friends through this adventure than anything else that I've ever played. So, um, take that for what you will. Uh, and uh, and if you know anybody that that that, that has played this as a, as a player or as a DM, um, I guarantee you uh, they're probably going to say the exact same thing. So, for all those reasons and more, I highly, highly, highly suggest picking this up. You can get it through the Frog God Games website. Uh, go there. You can check out what other people have had to say about it. Um, the other thing, and it should be mentioned, is that it doesn't have to be so much this is what you, like, like you have to run, through, run people through this. 
the wilderness areas, the dungeon levels, everything like that can easily be taken out of this world, transported and put into your favorite world. Heck, you can even take the basic idea and put it into a different system. I could see people taking this and putting it into 13 Age or Dungeon World or Savage Worlds or any of those things. And um and I could see and just taking the ideas and the 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 suggestions and and just like the maps and what have you. And I mean, and for that matter, you could just take levels of this out and just put it in there. You don't have to put them all in this giant, crazy dungeon where where this evil demon lord awaits everyone at the bottom level, which you know is pretty cool too. So, um, so there you go. Uh, if you have any questions about Rapan Athuk, I would love to hear them. Um, I would love to tell you more about uh, how awesome it is if you give me the chance. Um, as always, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye.